at the end of the last video I left you um, to have a go at filling in these params. So what I've got here on the screen now is my version. If you looked at the Word document you might have found a bit of help particularly with the uh, radio buttons it has that in the um, document. I've also renumbered mine but you'll see why in a moment when we do the SQL. It doesn't matter about the order as long as you remember the order it's fine, it's absolutely fine. I've just changed mine around slightly um, to make the SQL statement a bit simpler to understand. So you'll notice P0 here is text new question um, P1 is text answer 1, answer 2, answer 3, answer 4 then the radio buttons and then finally the difficulty and the combo box for the topic. If you want to change yours to look like mine you can do that. If you don't and you're happy with the way the order in which you have yours no problem keep it as that. But at the moment what this bit does here, if I highlight it, the contents of the if valid question is true. So if all of this validation was OK, then we're going to do this. I've created an array of type OLE DB parameter, a size 8, and then I'm filling each element of that array with one bit of data from my form. So the, the question, a possible answer, possible answer, possible answer, possible answer. This bit will only um, put which is the correct answer. I don't want to store the contents of all four radio buttons. I only want to know which one was checked. And that's what this does. If answer 1 was checked, that goes into the um, array. If answer 2 was checked, that goes into the array. You'll notice that each time it's the same element of the array. So I'm not storing all four. I'm only storing one, depending on which one has been checked. So that's just a way of storing which one has been which one is the right answer. And then finally just the um, number up and down. You see that's not a text, that's a value and then the combo. Um, and that's that. What we now need to do is to create the SQL. To do that I'm going to create a variable. I'm going to call it SQL. It's going to be a string I could do our string, I don't really need to because this is going to be very long so I'm saving a bit of space. So I want to pass data into the database which means it's an insert into command. I want to insert it into the customer table, or the customers. That's not question, it's not customers, it's questions, sorry. Into the questions table. Then I need to list the fields that I want to put data into because the reason I have to put these in is because there is an ID number field if you remember when we looked at the database and I don't want to put anything into there so all I need to do is go through and write in every field one is called question text one is called answer one answer two answer three answer four uh, correct difficulty category. So there we go. There are the fields. I'm going to get rid of this explorer bit just because you can see it's getting to be very long. So, so far we've got insert into the table questions and we're going to put them into the fields. Question text, answer one, answer two, answer three, answer four, correct, difficulty category. And they're fields that exist in the database. You can go and have a look if you don't believe me or you want to check. What I now, ne now need to do is say what values I want to go into there. Values. So into question text I want the the question text. Now that's from text new question and it's stored in parameter 0 the at p0. So here I put at p0 and that the contents of this will go into this. So the next thing I want in, in the list is answer 1. Answer 1 is stored in at P1. Now this is where yours might change. If you've got a different order here, that's fine. These don't have to go up, you know, with P0, P1. They can be in any order as long as the first one is where you've stored the question text. The second one is where you've stored answer 1. So I'm just going to go through and fill this in. I've done The reason I've changed the order is so there is a numerical order here which just makes life a bit easier for me. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and close. 
and that's it. There's my SQL statement. I can't fit it all on one page. I suppose I could zoom out a bit and you can just fit it on. Hopefully you can see that. So dim create the variable SQL. This is string. It knows it's a string because I've set the value. Equals insert into questions and these are the fields I want to put data into and the values I want to put in are these values and they will match the order of the, the fields here. So P1, P0 goes in there. P1 to there, etc. And there I've created my SQL statement. That's it. That's all I need to do for that. I need to make sure it's on one line. Can't um, separate it. Don't worry, it goes off. <coughs> We're not bothered about that. The next thing I need to do is to run the query. Now, Access Helper is the code. Remember, we imported this code before. This is the code that's going to run it. And to run an insert into is an execute non query. It's not actually a query. A query is questioning or getting data from the database. And we're not getting data from the database here. We're putting database into it. And I'm going to pass it the SQL string and the params data uh, params array. So there, I've created the SQL and I've said run it. What am I running? I'm running the SQL statement that I've put in here, this string, and I'm getting the data from the params database. And that should work. Let's have a go. If I run my program, I'll say what color is the moon? That's definitely geography. It's a, it's a very hard question. Let's set it as difficulty 10. Um, pink. It is pink sometimes. Cheese color. Yellow black. And the correct one is cheese. Save. And nothing happens. That's fine. Let's go and have a look at the database to see if it worked. So I'll go to my bin debug folder. There's the database. If I open it up, you can see a couple of other test questions I've done, but here. So the the question is now being saved in the database. Try that, see if it works. 